Yo, this is Venom Fire here back from the video and today we're going to be hopping into Clef the Gods offensive scheme for the Madden 23 Thanksgiving tournament. And this is the tournament where he lost in the finals, but overall I do think he had a really good offensive scheme. Just a couple of mistakes on his part was the reason he didn't win. But if I had to compare this offense to Dez's offense, I would say this one is certainly a little bit or a lot better, more effective. You will, I think you'll find more success online. And overall, it is definitely different because we're running tight instead of bunch. Um, of course, with these videos, I'm not buying someone's ebook. I always like to mention this. Um, I'm not buying his ebook, writing down his plays, and then re uploading it. I'm simply watching the game the way you can as well. And I'm writing down the setups that he ran. So let me know if you guys want to see anybody else's schemes because could definitely bring that for you guys. But. Hopping into it, we are in the gun tight formation out of the Washington football team offensive playbook. So football team offense, um, written version of this will be down below pinned in the comments. You can follow along with that as well. But with this formation, he did have Hot Route Master, so we're gonna be using Hot Route Master. We got the Bucks, of course. Same thing we did last video. Now, uh, with tight, he ran three plays, only three plays, and it was bench slot post and PA cross. So as long as you have those three in your audibles, you're chilling. He didn't even, ran, he ran the ball maybe once, so I'll show it slightly. But yeah, other than that, let's start out in his most popular play, which is going to be the slot post in the middle there. So um, sometimes these are just strictly hot route base setups as well. So we'll talk about those in addition. I'm just gonna be facing a base DB fire too, cause you're running tight. You're gonna be facing a little bit of pressure. That's to be expected not to be too surprising. Now, starting out with slot posts, and also before into the video, make sure you guys drop a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below. If you guys wanna see more of these videos, let me know what you wanna see um, besides these pro schemes as well. But with this slot post play, it is very good for a couple of reasons. The first one being Mike Evans. He is kind of the key route that you keep a lot of the time when you're running this play. Um, there's just a lot of threat with it. So our first setup, we're just going to motion him out. We're going to streak Y, slant X, and block the running back. So simple slant pose combination. You have a little clear out, and then you have Mike Evans as kind of your bailout option. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, you're throwing it to him. Or in this case, it's cover two, so you can kind of highball it over the top and fit it into that window. Again, if he's manned up one-on-one, -on -one, you can, of course, highball it. And if you have a big body receiver, you can catch it. So again, with Tampa Bay, obviously, Mike Evans is kind of our best aggressive catcher, so we threw him there, but also you could put anyone like Julio right there as well. Now, with tight, it is tight end base. You throw to this guy actually a pretty good amount, so I would get a good tight end. But yeah, first setup, slant X, give you this post, streak. So we'll snap it again. If you can, you can just easily dump it down to your boy Julio Jones. He's kind of your first read. If the user is not following him, you can of course take that. Generally, the user will be between the slant or the post, so usually you throw it to whichever one he doesn't. If he's defending the bigger route, which is the post, you kind of snap throw it to the slant. Otherwise, you can wait a little bit longer if you have time, and then you can actually fit it into A right there. We just got shedded to death, but you can kind of see how A was going to be open. We'll see if we can get better protection there, because my God, that was some Tampa Bay Buccaneers protection for you for this season, like with how bad it's kind of been. But you can kind of fit it in there. Just an idea of what you could see. So that's setup number one. And again, some of these setups will be pretty similar to each other, but we'll switch up a route here. We'll switch up a route there. So that's kind of your idea behind it. Now, second setup, you're going to once again get a motion out B, which is kind of a common theme out of this play and actually out of a lot of this offense. You're going to motion out Mike Evans, but on this one, you're going to wheel RB, and that's really going to be your difference in the play. Just throwing an extra route out there. So your idea here is to get the ball out pretty quickly. Once you send this running back out, one of these corners is going to come free. Pause. So it's the guy on the right. You can easily just snap it and hit your boy Fournette in the flats. And overall, that is effective. The user, it's going to be difficult for him to get out there. And sending pressure, nobody's going to be able to get out there besides the user. So if you don't see the user there, you can feel safe to throw it. Let's say he is manned up by the linebacker or something. You can hit X. And even though they are setting pressure with the slot corner, you have enough time to really throw it to almost every receiver. Uh, your hot receiver can be Chris Godwin if it needs to be. So you can kind of quick snap it, throw it to him or Mike Evans for that case. So again, if I want to, I'm able to throw it maybe over the top. It's a tight throw, but if there's no vert hook, if that's his user, he could be open as well. Same thing with the post. Kind of want to throw it as a streak in this case because 
it's not gonna have time to develop if he's sending pressure. If he's sending three man rush, he of course could get open, but that's setup number two. For setup number three, you're gonna once again wheel RB, but it's actually gonna be the exact same setup just with one different route, and that's going to be to put A on a crosser. This is a route that you'll see a lot. Uh, again, you'll streak Y, slant X, so just a little bit of a different thing. You have a crosser, and this is going to get a little bit deeper right there. We got disengaged, so I just had to throw the fire the ball off. Uh, but I do enjoy using this crosser. Uh, it gets a little bit deeper than the post, and you can generally high ball it over any vertical hook type of a zone. Here again, you'll see Fortnite is going to be open. He's really open against almost every single coverage. There's no zone that will really defend that. So as long as you're snapping the ball, throwing it quickly, uh, you should never really have a problem with that. Uh, again, if you're facing the pressure and you have someone like LA, you don't really have a mobile quarterback, make sure you're stepping up in the pocket the way I just did there. That's a very effective concept to especially edge the pressure. You step up in the pocket and a lot of times these guys can actually get picked up. You see we got disengaged, we got pressure from that corner, and we are still almost able to get the ball off, but we also didn't take a sack, so. Um, but again, overall this play is pretty good if you have time. And again, if you want, you can kind of fire it up to Mike Evans. You guys know the aggressive catch. That was not the case there, but it wasn't intercepted, so it worked. Uh, but that's setup number three. Moving on to setup number four, what you're going to do, once again, streak Y. As you see, kind of our consistent theme, you're going to cross A. This time you're going to block the running back, and you're still going to slant X. So basically the same exact thing, except now we should have our protection kind of taken care of. And we actually have time to throw this up. Again, effort hook could defend it. It could not if that's his user, which, again, one of those routes will be his user, and he's going to defend one of them. So one of them is always going to be open the way it is here. Um, just this cover too. Of course, these are both user or CPU controlled, so a lot of the things that would be open aren't necessarily. But you can again check it down to Julio. You have B that is open. I'm not going to throw it to him every single play, but you know B is open against this look and against man coverage. He's always open if it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Um, but with Bray in this case, generally against any base coverage, I would wait to throw it. But um, against this coverage, you kind of have, would have to throw it earlier rather than later. But Moving on to our next setup, we're gonna actually cross X and slant A, so kind of running something different. We're still gonna block our running back here, but this would be our kind of base coverage. Crosser with X, and holy, like, is number 60 stupid or something? I really don't understand why he's crying. I just block the dude in front of you, man. I'm just gonna try sliding to the right or the left, and there we get him picked up. All right, so I actually kind of want to show these plays, so I'm going to switch up to a regular Tampa 2 just really briefly because getting shedded, it's a concept out of this that, again, it's, it, it's I don't want to waste your guys' time setting up protection every single play, so we're just going to switch to a uh, cover 2 sink just for the time being. But again, obviously, getting shedded like that is an opportunity that could happen. So again, for this one, it's crossing X, and this could be different because he's expecting the slant probably from that X position, and just mixing up the routes like that could definitely have an effect on him. Because now you can hit Cameron Braid over here, which again, he's usually expecting Braid to go deeper. So it could throw off his timing a little bit. Throwing up, you know, switching up a route there is not a bad choice at all. So again, you can slant him, you can cross Julio. We're still doing the same thing with Chris Godwin, but with this throw to Julio, you can kind of fit it into a window right there, which I actually enjoy a little bit more. Depending on the hash placement, the crosser will get open more from the tight end or the receiver. So that is your next setup. Um, <clears throat> and moving on, we have, going back to the basics, we're actually gonna slant X. This time we're gonna put A on a little different check down. We're just gonna streak B. So this is a no motion out. Um, and actually that previous one might have not been either. So I was actually kind of running it wrong. So I'll reset going back to the previous setup. This is the second to last one. And this is your setup. He actually had to be on a streak, not that motion out route. So that's my fault. But this is your setup. And again, with Julio, I would throw it right over the top there rather than waiting on the sideline and throwing it there. But again, simple cross post, you guys, or cross slant combination. But now we're gonna go back to the last one. And again, it's going to be 
back to X on a slant and the crosser, but we're just throwing got four net on this little route. And this is if, again, if you're facing pressure, sending five out is maybe not the worst idea because you see when I was blocking six, I was still really getting shedded. Now, the way that people generally play dollar is they will only be rushing one of those slot corners, especially if you have threat detector, the way that uh, Dez was actually in the game. So facing pressure like that might not be as bad as it, you know the way I'm doing it sending five every play or I was there you again you see the slant but pretty much just the same thing we've been doing slant crosser I'm gonna try and hit right here um, he's defended well but you see he's able to come down with the catch again expect the if the user's over there you should be able to high ball it over him unless he's all the way over him but usually one of those routes is gonna be open just depending on who he uses but that's going to do it for slot post. Let's move into our next play, which is going to be PA cross. We have three or four setups for this one. First one being just a stock setup. He actually came out, ran this play stock a decent amount. One route that I like a lot is X. Against zone coverage, he's not very good, but he's actually pretty dang good against man coverage. Now, um, against this cover two look, it's not the best because the zones, the vert hook is over there, but you do have a small window. Now, he's getting um, kind of bumped there, which is a little bit unfortunate. He's getting pass interfered with, but um, this play is just good. You have a couple of quick snap throws you could throw. Godwin being your first read. If he's open, throw it to him. You have that nice little seam streak with uh, Cameron Brait. So with Cameron Brait, if you can, you can actually kind of fit him in there. Now, be careful for knockouts, things like that. But if you have like a little ability on him, he could catch the ball better. Maybe that's a route that could work. And he gets cover two if you have time. You can fire this over to Mike Evans. This is really the route that you want to hit. It gets over the top of a lot of coverage, especially if he's running something like this cover two type of look that you do see that he was actually facing uh, in that championship game, which is kind of why I'm running it. But um, with X, if you have time, he does get open. I'm trying to get enough time here. See if we can. And you see there's an example of him being open. So it's a tight window, but if that's your last read, which it should be. It's the slowest developing route. You can't actually hit him in situations like that, even without a clear out over there. That's setup number one. Setup number two, probably a little bit better, is just to throw X on a straight up corner route, just like so. I like to keep the play action. It seems to help protection, and this route is straight up just going to be open against cover two. Um, it'll be open against man coverage as well if you have a good enough wide receiver there. So I do enjoy this setup probably the best out of that other one because, again, you have this deeper route. Julio on that left side is on a little bit of a shorter corner out. This one's going to be a deeper with Mike Evans. Again, you have your little seam streak with Cameron Bright, and then you have your basic crossing route with Chris Godwin, which is, again, should be your first read. If you see him open, just throw it. It's a five, six, seven yard pass every time. And then again, if you want, you can kind of fire him. That's kind of the timing that you would want right as he starts, stops running slower, kind of goes into that fast gear. That's kind of when you want to throw it, in my opinion. So again, you kind of right there. And you see he's able to come down with it. Even Bray. Bray's not the best tight end. If you throw it with good enough timing, again, always highball that route. It should be money. Um, even with like a vert hook. And we have three yellows there. Again, Julio Jones. It's a little bit more clear cut there. And it's faster if you're facing pressure to go with the traditional corner route rather than that first kind of post corner. So that is setup number two. Setup number three is going to be kind of a um, similar setup to the slot post ones, but we just keep play action. So that's the difference. For this one, you're going to streak A, you're going to streak Y, you're going to cross X, cross B, and then you keep play action. I'm in the wrong play. But here's the setup, just straight up two crossers. Now with this setup, this was a play that he ran that he actually turned the ball over on. If you remember, it was fourth down and he straight up highballed it to Cam Brate. Well, as we just got pass interfered with. Um, so throwing the high ball like in traffic on fourth down is generally not the best idea, but this setup is actually pretty good. It, it does work pretty well with these high balls and like setting them up. They s have a lot of space after they break from that inside the numbers going breaking to the outside. You have a lot of space to throw it. So there we threw it to Julio Jones. Now I'm going to try and throw it to Mike Evans. And again, it's a guessing game. Throw it to whoever he's not using. Evans takes a little bit longer coming from that short side of the field to the wide side, of course, as you would expect. But if you have just enough time, and again, you're blocking six with the play action, as long as he doesn't send crazy, crazy pressure, if he only sends one slot corner, something like that, then you have a situation where you can hit, definitely hit Mike Evans. So again, with these seam streaks, 
you can kind of fit him in there, especially if you have a good possession receiver, guys like Cup. In that position, you see Godwin hits him. Brady, on the other hand, he's kind of getting bumped, but that would be a route that you can, of course, throw if there's not like a mid-read strictly over him. Like right there, boom, you can hit him. So uh, definitely a solid play. It looks weird on paper, but it actually ends up working pretty well with all these reads, double crossers. Now, our last setup for PA cross is going to be just A on a corner out. This is kind of a um, hot route setup. You move all these routes, X on and in, streak Y, streak B. Um, but again, you're just keeping the play action and then you just motion Mike Evans out and you're just going to snap the ball. So you have A on this deeper corner out, similar to like a bench switch or a bench play, just straight up bench rather. I don't know why I said bench switch, but this play is pretty dang good if you want to open up rate. Again, with bench, you'll see a lot of the times um, Clef was thrown to Y and I think with this formation, he always kept it like this. He never flipped it. So if you have a right-handed quarterback, generally you will just keep your running back on that side as a rule of thumb. But this setup's not bad. Again, sometimes keeping things simpler, you saw in the last video with Dez, his concepts were very simple. And sometimes just those simple concepts seem to work a little bit better. So you just, you're kind of allowing, preventing yourself from yourself of just making those mistakes and running some plays like this is not a bad idea every now and then. Of course, we all want to hit the big play, but sometimes taking your drag, creating these basic concepts is not the worst thing in the world. So again, this play will work against cover three as well because you have that clear out from Mike Evans. So feel free to run this against really every coverage and it should work, just a basic, simple concept. But let's move into our last play, which is bench. And again, maybe I'll show just a couple runs, but Clef really didn't run the ball even facing dollar all game, which I didn't necessarily agree with. If you're facing dollar, guys, feel free to run the ball as much as you want because it will work every single time. But first bench setup is just a streak RB. Now this setup was a little bit better when he didn't go on that delayed streak when you guys know what I'm talking about. He just went on that straight up streak, um, which was the play at the time of the patch. So play probably not as good, but you have this little streak and with bench, the route that he threw almost exclusively was this little corner out to Chris God when he had cup in this position and it was his best route because of just straight up how open it is. Um, Against cover two, you can hit Julio Jones as well. As long as that guy's not in like a hard flat, if he's playing 10 yard depth or higher with his zone drops, feel free to throw that route almost every single time. If it's cover three, he should be open as well. That curl flat should not really be able to defend it, but make sure you throw it earlier. If I threw that, you know, a second late, it's probably a pick six. So be careful. Make sure you have Gunslinger, of course, because if you have a slow release QB, Mahomes without Gunslinger or something, you'd be in trouble. With this route, you want to pass these to the outside. It's very important that you do that. It kind of runs a little bit vertically at the end. So timing wise, that's what you've got to do. Over on this right side again, you can hit Mike Evans. He seems a little bit tighter. That is because he's on the short side of the field. I'm not fully on the short side either. If I was fully on the short side, you would see Godwin be a little bit more open if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there you have that. And then you have this little streak with Fournette. Again, obviously it's better when he runs right down the middle. You can't do that anymore because they patched it. So you got to do what you can. And that's having him just run down the side, which isn't the worst thing either. It seems to open up right a little bit. And if his user's in that Burt Hook position, that Fournette route can be open. You create a situation where he has to decide between one of the corner outs or Leonard Fournette. If it's cover three, sometimes these, these corners still can get open, but the third does a pretty good job of playing them. So generally you'll see the read being these little quicker out, outs to Julio, which is not bad. You know, again, he's not always thinking about this bench play. He's expecting things like slot posts. So it really puts pressure on the defense if you run that slot post play effectively, which is what you want to establish at the beginning of the game. Run that play, focus him on inside the numbers. Okay, I got to defend this cross, this post, this slant, this wheel. And then you switch to something like this bench play a little bit later. You run these plays a little bit less often so that he doesn't focus on it. And then you, that's when you can hit these deeper corner routes for what should be your bigger plays. Um, with Fournette, with that streak nowadays, I like to throw it just a little bit right there. Plays very good in the red zone. These wide running back streaks are a lot better now in the red zone. Although probably not good as good overall. But again, these corner outs, both sides will be open against cover two. You see Bray, you see Godwin. So that's setup number one. Moving into setup number two, what you're going to do is you're going to streak B, wheel RB, streak Y, cross A, and then you're going to motion out Evan. So this is a little bit less of a bench setup, but you still do have some concepts. The first one being you still have this out route to Julio Jones that should be open. 
quick snap a lot of situations unless he's base line and has that curl fight out there it's a little bit tougher but it honestly should you should still have a window um this year you can actually click on undercut a lot of stuff with these out routes so even if you accidentally throw it in coverage click on uh, but we do have this route too great that i like again assuming there's no vert hook over there that route should be money and a lot of times people are leaving the middle of the field to themselves so that route should be open although it is debagged pretty well in this case now i like the setup after this one a lot better this setup is not bad though you have a little streak to mike evans that you can hit as well if you want to so man coverage that's a little bit better feel free to throw that route and then again you have this quick snap pass to your boy leonard fournette that you can take advantage of so you have a couple of hot reads rb and x later in the play you have these things like b um in your crosser and then again with chris godwin these seam streaks don't sleep on these routes you can kind of fire them inside and you have an opportunity to catch him it just depends on how close the safety is and if he has a bird hook there if he has no zone there that's when you can kind of quick snap throw it because he probably is focusing on Brayton immediately seeing him on that instantly developing route so keep that in mind guys uh i'll show fournette here fournette again there's a zone right there but he's not defending him if he's blitzing force it's open even if he's zone coverage he's open as long as he's not manned up from that slot corner or even outside corner he's playing a little bit aggressive but let's hop into our last bench setup again this is my favorite setup streak a wheel rb streak b and you're just kind of running a simple concept you just make things easier on yourself with this setup it spreads out the defense and you're streaking a streaking b and then you have fournette on this little wheel route so again your hot read rb I would consider this seam streak a hot read as well. Make sure you high ball pass lead inside if you're throwing it to him. Evans, again, he's a kind of a bailout. And then I like this because you have, keep your bench on this left side. So if I end up finding nobody open between X, RB, or A, late in the play, I can throw it to Y. Now, there is situations where Godwin's usually the guy he's using, but if he sees like a wheel route instantly, maybe he runs over there and he's out of position. So it just all depends on how well you set up your plays by running things like slot posts. So keep that in mind. I think this setup would also work better if we were on the left hash, which I want to move to just to show you guys what the spacing would look like, which again, obviously you probably have a little bit more space for a lot of these routes. I'm in the wrong play. But again, you see how we're motioning Evans out on every single play, so he doesn't really know what you're running. And again, when you run things like PA cross and you just get to the line, you only have to do one hot route, snap the ball, or just straight up snap the ball. So he doesn't really have time to think about what play you're running. There you see you have a little bit better spacing for the tight end because of that um, side that you're on. So we like that concept a lot. And then with um, this bench setup, if Julio, you have Godwin. Julio is a little bit more open there, and now you see Godwin is a little bit more open as well. So both routes seem to be a little bit more open, but that's going to be the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you drop a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below. Let me know what you guys want to see next, and peace. I'm out of here.